Hey, this is Math 7, Unit 5, Lesson 3, called Changing Elevation. All right, and the first three problems here are ones that are part of your cool down here, looking at finding the sums. And so we can see we're adding up both positive and negative numbers, and that's what we're doing. So let's take a look at number five real quick. We have 112 plus a negative 112. So these two values here are simply going to cancel one another out, and you're left with just simply... 37. When we look at number four, we have two fractions. We have a negative half and a positive three-fourths. Um, when we have fractions, we want to add or subtract. Whether it's positive or negative, we want to have a common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply negative one-half by two over two. So I end up with negative two over four. And then we're going to add that. Now that that's what that's going to be rewritten, we can use negative 2 over 4 and add it to 3 fourths there. So the denominator is going to stay the same. And we have a positive 3 and a negative 2. So 3 minus 2 is 1. And we end up with 1 fourth as a solution. Number 6. What is the elevation if a climber climbs 405 feet and then descends, means they go down, 87 feet? So we have 405, and the next thing he does, we're going to add to what he does, or she, we're going to descend, so negative 87. So to solve this here, I am going to do 405, and I'm going to go ahead and subtract 87. I have to borrow from that one, to borrow from that one. So 15 minus 7 is 8, 9 minus 8 is 1, and 3 minus 0 is 3. So the elevation is going to be 318 feet. Okay? And that's a good one there. For B, it says a dolphin starts at negative 12 feet and leaps 29 feet above the water. Okay. So we want to find the elevation. Elevation for that one there. Um, I'm guessing we want to find the elevation for how far he is above the water. Well, here's the thing. If he leaps 29 feet above the water, then that is his ending elevation. So I think what I saw happening was we just said he lip, leaps 25 feet, and we just cross that part off and say, all right, we're going to be down here at negative 12, and then we're going to go up 29 feet. And if ask our, a question we want to ask is, where are we at now? So in essence, as a problem, we're doing negative 12, and we're adding 29 feet to that. Okay? So to solve this here, we will do 29 minus 12. And I do that because we're going to take the larger uh, value here and subtract the other one. 9 minus 2 is 7. 2 minus 1 is 17. And then we see which one has a greater absolute value. We'd say this positive one does. So it's going to stay a positive 17 feet is where he'd end up at. So up here, end up at positive 17. That's where he'd end up at. All right. This next one here, we can just see it's a peregrine falcon, starts at 758 and dives 597. So you're going to write down an equation that shows 758, and then we're adding negative 597. So solve that one there. Okay, so 758, and we're going to be adding a negative 597. I'm going to let you do that there. And then the last one, a plane ascends. To ascend means to go up 5,325 feet and then climbs 87 feet more. So it's going to be increasing another 87 feet to find out where that's going to be. So those two, I'll let you figure those out on your own. For number seven, it says determine whether each expression has a value that is positive or negative. You don't have to solve it, it just wants to know if it's positive or negative. So let's see what you know about some numbers. So 3 out of 4, that's like a 7.75, okay, it's a decimal. I know you guys love your decimals. And this one here is at a 0.66, so it's negative. So when you combine those together, which one has the bigger va absolute value? Well, this one does here. So we would say that because that one has a greater absolute value, it's going to be a positive solution. Over here, I already know that this positive number, 12, I have a negative 17. I already know there's more negatives over here than there are positives, aren't there? 
I also get to combine those. So I have a lot of negative numbers compared to that one there. So we would say that it's going to end up being a negative number, right, if we solve it. Here, two very close numbers, a 1 and a 1, so we almost can ignore that part, and let's compare. I have a 0.3 and a negative 0.6. What, what's the, the greater absolute value, the, ne the 0.6 or the 0.3? We would say this one's going to be the greater one, so we would say it's going to have a negative value. All right, number 8, do a couple of these ones here. Um, here we have 139.6, and it says add a negative 12.9. So we can go ahead and just subtract 12.9, and make sure you line up your columns the right way, your place value. We're going to borrow here. So 16 minus 9 is 7. Decimal stays where it is. 8 minus 2 is 6, and 13 minus 1 is 12. So we have 126.7. For part B, we see we have the two signs are the same. So since the signs are the same, we're going to go ahead and find the sum. 8.7 and 4.5, we're going to add those up. We have 12, carry the 1, and a decimal, and a 13. And because the signs are the same, we find the sum, we keep the sign the same. So negative 13.2 is what we have for a solution there. Okay. I'll let you do these ones on your own. Just be careful about your place value. This one only has a tenths. This has tenths and hundreds. So watch your place value when you set that up. And here, a similar one, we have two negative signs. We'll be able to find the sum and keep the sign the same. Your answer here should be negative. Should be negative. Your answer here should be a positive number. All right. Number nine. Number nine asks you to explain why the graph does not represent a proportional relationship here. So things you want to look at, proportional relationship, it should be linear, which it is linear. But you also want to look at one key fact, and I can point it out right here. Something is not quite right, right down there, but you explain why that is. All right, and number 10, finally. It says, Andre found a shirt on sale for 60% off. What a deal. If the original price of the shirt is expressed by P, does the expression 0.4p represent the sales price of the shirt after the discount? Explain your thinking. Okay, so let's think about this here. If I was to buy a shirt, okay, and, and normally if I was to do a 60% off, okay, think about the way sales price works. You take the price of the shirt, okay, whatever the price is, and then you're going to subtract the sales price, the discount. Now this discount here is going to be 0 0.60 times P. That's 60% off. And that would give you a solution. But we could also put a 1 in front of here to represent the whole price. Now, knowing what we know about uh, variables and combining like terms, we can do 1 minus 0 0.6. And what is 1 minus 0 0.6? Well, let's do this right here. 1 minus 0 0.60. We have borrow here, 10 minus 6 is 4, and we have 0.4. So when I do 1p minus 0.60p, I end up with 0.40p. Or I could just leave it as 0.4p, and that certainly matches there. So those are the same there. And the reason it works is because the cost for the sales price after this count means I'm only going to pay 40% of the original price. And so I get the 40% by multiplying the price times 0.4. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.